Okay, so hopefully that explanation made clear how exactly these work. Um, and that is my last medical, you know, biological treatment for erectile dysfunction. Like I said at the beginning of this series, you know, clearly erectile functioning is important for fertility. And so it's a really important uh, medical treatment. And then there's this other sort of mental factor that goes with being able to have an erection and being able to have coitus or, um, you know, other kinds of penetrating sex. And so um, there are a lot of treatments available for erectile dysfunction. That is, that is true. Um, let's Oh, I forgot about the blood vessel surgery. I forgot if in case the person is having erectile dysfunction because of um, clogged arteries to the penis, they can have surgery that will clear that out or um, they can do bypass surgery to provide blood flow back to the penis. Um, whoops. Okay. So that seems like enough on erectile dysfunction. <laughs> um, delayed ejaculation also sometimes called impaired ejaculation, is where um, the person, the man, has an erection and can maintain an erection, but can't ever reach the sensation of orgasm or the event of ejaculation. It's just a different kind of lack of control over ejaculation. And so, for example, Kaplan kind of lumps premature ejaculation and delayed ejaculation into one category, really just lack of control over ejaculation. It's really important to remember that we are not talking about men who are currently in the refractory period because no one can ejaculate again during the refractory period. Um, so, and it's not just ejaculation that we're talking about here. It's not even being able to reach the sensation of orgasm. And hopefully you guys realize that orgasm and ejaculation are in fact separate events so that if a man wanted to, he could reach orgasm a few times before ejaculating, or he could ejaculate and then still have orgasms after that. Um, we're not talking about necessarily though in those situations, the inability to have a second orgasm is not considered a clinical issue. <laughs> so um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a person who this is their first opportunity to have sex today and they're aroused, they're into it, but they can't reach orgasm. So what can cause it? Well, I got a little bit longer list as evidenced by my larger box here. Um, depression or anxiety can absolutely cause delayed ejaculation. These can be um, symptoms of those disorders. Um, relationship problems, again, you know, if, if it's possible that, you know, subconscious hostility or something could prevent erection, you could imagine that those same kind of things could prevent ejaculation. It could be performance anxiety. Maybe the person is so concerned about premature ejaculation that they've taught themselves to, you know, perform really well by, you know, counting baseball scores over the past, you know, four World Series or, you know, cite, you know, recite in their head some speech that they gave in high school or something just to take their mind off of what they're doing so that they actually are, um, getting to the point, just like we talked about with premature ejaculation, that you could have these sort of learned habits that can cause early ejaculation. You could have these same kind of learned habit habits that are now causing impaired ejaculation. Poor body image. Now, this might seem off on this list, but a lot of times when a man doesn't feel really good about how he looks, he might feel like he has to overcompensate through like long you know, actual thrusting kinds of sex, you know, like I, you know, really have to show what a man I am kind of thing. Um, and that poor body image can really manifest in like overcompensation in, um, you know, these kinds of sex acts. Cultural or religious taboos. There are sometimes people who know that it's wrong to have, you know, premarital sex or that um, they shouldn't be having the kind of sex that they're having and enjoying right now, or they shouldn't be having sex with this kind of person or, whatever their taboo is, and that can cause them to enjoy what they're doing, but then deprive themselves of reaching orgasm or ejaculation, um, that they feel like maybe, well, I didn't really consummate it all the way, right? Because I, I, I never really came, so it didn't really count. And, uh, you know, like that. And then there can be, uh, this final one is f differences between the fantasies that he's been having all this time and then what their real partner is really like or what they're actually doing right now 
is not as exciting or as stimulating as as what they always thought it would be or, or the things that they've been watching on the internet or things like that. Um, and so it's actually could be a manifestation of them being kind of disappointed, um, which I am reluctant to say out loud because as I'm discussing what goes on in the male mind, I know I have female listeners who are thinking to themselves, see, I knew it. And um, it's just really important to notice that's like last thing on the list is the, you know, that the partner is disappointing. Um, Biologically, different kinds of neurological diseases can actually cause a breakdown in the uh, messages coming from what should now be, okay, so if we got fully aroused, right, I've got a, a, you know, full erection, so my parasympathetic nervous system has done its job, now it's supposed to trigger over onto the sympathetic nervous system, and it's supposed to control ejaculation and orgasm. Um, If there's some kind of breakdown in that transition, um, due to lots of different kinds of neurological diseases, um, we could have a lack of ejaculation. So the brain might be thinking certain thoughts and everything is great, but, you know, having uh, neuropathy, which is where, you know, the nerves in in the periphery, the penis counts as part of the periphery, um, are just not getting the messages that they should. Having had a stroke can cause weakness in certain parts of the body, including the penis. Um, Spinal cord cord damage, people who are um, paraplegic, which means from the waist down, or quadriplegic from the shoulders down, they may have some degree of, um, you know, lack of sensitivity or, um, you know, inability to ejaculate. It could be that having a urinary tract infection can prevent ejaculation. The, the irritation in the bladder could actually interfere with that little um, valve that's supposed to block off urine during erection. And so if that's malfunctioning, e- ejaculation can't occur either. And so you can have uh, a breakdown of that. Not having enough testosterone, testosterone, testosterone. And or having hypothyroid. See how I combine those together into testosterone. (laughs) So low testosterone, hypothyroid, that means an underactive thyroid gland so that other hormones are out of balance. Um, Retrograde ejaculation. This is another situation that would involve that valve that closes off the bladder. So retrograde ejaculation is when um, the person actually is ejaculating, they just don't realize it because it's actually dumping into their bladder instead of going into going out the urethra. So if that valve um, malfunctions between the bladder and the ejaculatory duct, it usually malfunctions in the way of allowing the ejaculate to go into the bladder. And uh, oftentimes in class, I have students ask, is that harmful? Like it almost feels like it would cause an infection or something, but everything inside your body is basically okay to be put into other parts of the body usually. Um, the, in this case, absolutely. And I mean, the bladder is full of, um, you know, ammonia that cleans everything anyway. So um, yeah, it doesn't harm anything. You just urinate it out the next time you urinate. But it definitely, you could imagine that a man who has retrograde ejaculation might think he's not ejaculating right? And it come to find out he actually just has retrograde ejaculation. There are medications that can treat that, by the way. Um, certain medications can cause delayed ejaculation, though. And you'll notice there are some of these, uh, like antidepressants that show up frequently on the prescription medication list as far as interfering with sexual functioning. Um, diuretics are on that list. Diuretics are uh, medications that help to um, shed excess water, and they can actually dehydrate us. And so that can actually make it... Um, less likely that we can get high enough blood pressure to reach orgasm. Um, Having blood pressure medications, again, can keep your blood pressure low, which is good. So you're not going to have a stroke or something, but it also can keep it low enough that now um, orgasm is not possible. Antipsychotics, certain of those are inhibitive and also anti-seizure medications can cause this same outcome. So there are lots of causes. Alcohol is on our list as a separate thing because it's um, on my medications. Those are all medications, right? Alcohol is the only like sort of um, illicit drug that seems to be, well, I shouldn't say illicit, uh, (laughs) non-medicated medication type of drug that has the um, delayed ejaculation possibility. So alcohol interferes with sexual functioning in a lot of ways. So what do we do? Well, psychological, we're going to always say Oh, take the pressure off. Stop trying to reach orgasm and just enjoy the process, right? 
um, couples therapy in case it really is about some kind of difficulty that the couple's having. Um, biologically, there are oral medications that can treat a lot of the different things that I mentioned on the list of biological causes. Um, it turns out that some are surprising that work. So I thought I'd put them on the list as things that are a surprising help. Parkinson's medications, which help to um, make our body produce L-dopa, uh, sorry, they, they help us to produce dopamine. They contain L-dopa. Um, they tend to be helpful. Um, certain allergy medications, antihistamines can be helpful. In fact, um, Viagra was first developed to be an allergy medicine and it didn't work as an allergy medicine. It had this weird side effect of, of erections. Um, so that's kind of funny. And then uh, anti-anxiety medications can also be helpful if you have a person who's um, having difficulty making that shift from the parasympathetic over into the sympathetic and then um, ejaculation. <sighs> that seems like a really good time to take a break and we will come back and talk about problems that affect females.